want to read some scripture right now. Uh, we're going to read out of Ecclesiastes. Uh, we're going to start uh, Ecclesiastes 3. We're going to read from verses 1 through 9. Uh, we're going to read that out of the ESV. And it reads, For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven. Again, there's a season for everything and a time for everything. Mm. Not for all things, for one thing, for a moment. And that's very important, very specific. There's a time to be born and a time to die. Yeah. You can't do both at the same time. Mm. Yeah. Very set, specific time frames for each of these events. There's a time to plant and a time to pluck up. What is planted? A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this day, dear Lord. We thank you for this opportunity, Father God. We thank you for the order that you provided in our lives, Father God. We thank you for just providing specific times and specific moments, dear Lord, that, that you've blessed us with, Father God. Dear Lord, we ask that we, we are able to be present for each of those times, dear Lord, for each of those moments, dear Lord, so that we can focus on you and we can focus on your blessings, Father God. Dear Lord, I ask that we're all here right now, Father God, but I ask that you allow us to all be present, Father God. Dear Lord, remove any distractions, Father God, dear Lord. Remove anything away from our minds, if it's the TV, if it's wondering what's happening next, dear Lord. Let us be present with you, Father God, today, Father God. For if you're not here in this place with us, Father God, this is nothing more than a presentation. It's just nothing more than words on a screen and someone orating, Father God. But with you present, Father God, great things can truly happen, Father God. Dear Lord, so I ask that you would decrease me, Father God, and increase you, dear Lord. Please give me the words to speak, Father God. Speak through me, dear Lord, so that your message may reach the ears and the hearts, Father God, of those that are truly waiting to hear from you, Father God. We thank you, we love you, and we adore you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. 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 Y'all can have your seats. I remember that this time. I think last, last time I was up here, I had everybody standing up for the whole, uh, <laughs> for the whole sermon. So I, I think I'm getting a little bit better. Um, so this week, we want to talk a little bit more about being present in the moment. Being present in the moment. And there's a huge difference from being here than it is from being present. There's so much joy that the Lord has in store for us with his blessings when we're present and not just here. And I kind of want you to think about someone preparing your favorite meal. You can smell it. You sit down, you cut it up, put it on a fork. You eat it, you chew it, you swallow it but you can't taste it. That's just being here. Being present is when we can truly enjoy it, when we can truly taste it as it's going down and nourishing our body. Same way with our blessings, right? I often hear, you miss your blessing, you miss your blessing. That doesn't mean that the Lord's not going to bless you because he's going to bless you regardless. That just means if you're not present for that blessing, that you'll miss that moment. And we've got to really focus on being present in the moment so that we can truly, truly enjoy our, our blessings. And you know, one thing's for certain is we all have an expiration date. We don't know when that expiration date may be, but do we live like we have an expiration date? Yeah, you know, I, I know in my house, let some food be about to expire. <laughs> let, we, we'll raid the cupboards, we'll raid the refrigerator, we'll have a 10 course meal just so we get out of what we put in. But 
are we living our lives in the same manner? Do we just wait? You know, I think of that, uh, that Geico commercial when they say they have an ant problem and you have the one lay at the refrigerator. <laughs> expired, expired, expired. Is that what we want our lives to be? If we're not being in the moment, just to be plucked away saying expired, 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 tossed to the side like we were meaningless because we missed those moments. Right? We've got to learn to be present in the moment. I mean, we're focused on the next thing. We're focused on the last thing. But the most important thing is right now, the present, the gift. Why is it the most important thing? Because that's the only thing that we can control. Not even control, that's the only thing that we can impact. We can't do anything about yesterday. We can plan all we want about tomorrow, but there's no guarantee that we'll be here. It's the right now. It's the right now that this minute, such a time as this, present, that's the only thing that we have control over. That's the only thing that we can impact. That's the only thing that we can enjoy. And like we read, yeah, there'll be some times where we'll laugh, but there'll be some times that we cry. But that's that moment. That's that moment being in the place that God has us because he ordained a time for it. Yeah. And when we're in that time, we can truly, truly enjoy it. You know, um, I, I've definitely been blessed in my life. Um, and, and I'm getting too old. I'm getting too old to not have enjoyed my blessings but I'm not old enough where I still can't be present and enjoy those blessings. You know, I, I've been saved from, I've had traffic stops, been, been blessed from that. You know, I, I've never been in need of anything, right? The Lord has always provided. Um, he's blessed me with three beautiful children, a gorgeous wife, a wonderful family, an extended family. No matter how dysfunctional we may be, yeah. the Lord still blessed us with it, right? Blessed me with it friends, family, a church family. These are all blessings from him, you know, and, and I want to be able to enjoy those things. We all need to be able to be present, yeah. to enjoy the moment and to not miss that moment. You know, it, it got me thinking back, um, you know, th this has been a milestone year, you know, for me and my family. Um, my oldest daughter, she just turned 21 a couple of weeks ago. And it really got me thinking back to all the times that I missed. Right when my wife was pregnant, instead of being in the moment and realizing that the Lord blessed us with the ability to have children, couldn't wait for the baby to get out, right? And then when the Lord entrusted us with this beautiful little girl that was totally dependent upon us, that she woke up in the middle of the night because she needed us, that she woke up in the middle of the night because she cried because she needed comfort from us, we couldn't wait till she slept through the night. And then we couldn't wait for her to start talking so she can tell us. Fast forward 21 years later now, where she would be quiet sometimes because she's opinionated, but that's all good too. But just not enjoying that moment. Then we couldn't wait for her to start walking, right? Missing the moment of, again, just those hugs and kisses that we wish we could have back. The time where we wish we can just sit with her and talk with her but we're so worried on that next thing, right? And then we couldn't wait for her to start going to school. Couldn't wait for her to get out the house and go to college, right? And now she's 21. Thank God for this time right now that she's here. I'll never get those times back. But we're so focused on that next thing that we truly aren't enjoying the blessings of the present. I mean, I have a 10-year-old now. You know, I look at her a little bit differently. You know, I, I try to enjoy those things. I try to enjoy those blessings, but she'll never be Deja. She'll never be Randy, right? I'll, I'll never get those things back that I missed with them, but I'm not going to miss them with her. And Randy, she just turned 18, um, another, an, another milestone. And, you know, she would be off to college, but because of time like now, we're blessed to have her for a little while longer. She's home. And I want her to be able to experience those things in college. I want her to get out there and live that life. But what I don't want is for things to get back to normal. I don't want things to get back to the way they were. Because, again, there's a time for everything, right? And I truly believe that the Lord ordained a time for this pandemic. Just imagine... You know, not even imagine, just think back 
For 400 years, black people have been persecuted, they've been shot, they've been killed, and it's all has happened. But life was happening, right? We were too busy to stop and notice what's going on because we were working, we had things going on, we had bills, we had sports, we had our favorite TV shows, we had movies to go through. But for a moment, the Lord put it all on pause. So when that police officer put that, man, that knee on that man's neck yeah. for that moment, and at that moment, someone else stood up and took pictures of it. Mm. And there was nothing else to distract us. So we had to be in that moment. Yeah. We've, that's been happening for years. It just so happened that we were there to see it. And think of all the change that's happening because we were present for that moment. Many people have lost their lives before. Many people are still losing their lives, yeah. right? But for this moment, the Lord slowed it down. So I, I want to get back to that. I want to see what the Lord has in store right now. I want to live in this moment right now yeah. where people have a voice, where people are recognizing things that have been going on forever. And if that means my daughter has to stay home a couple more weeks, a couple more months, thank you, Lord. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, for that, because I want to see what's next. I want to see what you have in store for us. I want us to be right here in this moment. You know, we've been preparing for this moment for the last nine years, the last nine months, the last nine weeks, the last nine seconds. Yeah. For this very moment, we've been talking about 2020 vision, seeing our calling in God. We've been talking about going deeper in our relationships. But if we're not present, how can we go deeper in a relationship? If we're distracted, how can we see our calling for the Lord? Yeah. The Lord wants us to be in this present moment where he doesn't want us to be. He doesn't want us to live in the past. The Lord talks about being in the present. He wants us to be in the present moment, to, to not live in the past, to not worry about past things. Um, in Isaiah 43, 18 through 19, it says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Forget the former things. So many times in our lives, we have our suitcase, that, our suitcase of former things that we travel along with, right? Yeah. Our suitcase of past relationships, mm. our suitcase of past experiences at work, mm. our suitcases of past hurt. And instead of forgetting about them, we, we pull it along. And anytime someone will sit down and listen, we take it, we set it down, and we unpack, and we remember the hurt. We remember the wrongs. We remember all of those bad things, those former things, right? Living in the past. We ask for a new relationship. We ask for a new job. We ask for a new chance. And there's one thing about when you get something new. They don't know about what went on in your life before that. So the only thing that they'll know is what you present to them. And what's the first thing that we present? Oh, you're not going to break my heart again. That, that's what that last person did. You know? Oh, you're not going to get over me on this job. They took advantage of me on that last job, right? So we just put the past in the forefront. And now we just told someone what they're not going to do. We didn't give them a chance to be in the moment. Lord doesn't want us to, to live in the past. Forget those former things, right? Yeah. Don't dwell on the past. And then there's some folks, too, living in the past. It's okay to be nostalgic, right? But the good old days, right? They sure don't make cars like they used to. Mm. Now I might wonder that with all the car problems I'm having right now, but <laughs> you never give the new cars a chance because you're so busy up. Man, that, that, they built cars tough back in the day. They didn't break down. And yeah, they also got like three miles a gallon too, right? So there are some interesting things that happen, right? There, there are some new, there's some good things with new cars, right? Also, we think about, oh man, TV is just not the same. You know, give some of these new shows a chance if that's your thing, right? We're so stuck on comparing, right, and dwelling on the past that we're not here in the present, that we're not living for right now. And the past is not where we need to be. Right? You know, I hear about, oh, they don't make music. You know, the music right now is terrible. You know, uh, 
if I'm not mistaken, when I was younger, I remember hearing songs like, let's get it on. <laughs> Me and Mrs. Jones. Yeah. She's a brick house. No now, the language may be a little bit different nowadays, but it's still the same concept, yeah, right? Sir. Still the same thought process. Right. But we're so stuck on these, the past yeah. that we don't realize that, mm -hmm. right? And again, I'm not telling you that you have to listen to it or not listen to it. We, it we're just so set on dwelling in the past that it blurs what's right in front of us. On, we can't see what's in front of us. And he says, see, I'm doing a new thing. New thing. A brand new thing. And let me tell you, it says, now it springs up. Do you perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So if I'm constantly looking back, if I'm constantly looking back, how can I see the new path in front of me? Right. I'm going to stumble. Yeah. I'm going to fall. Yeah each and every time because I'm in the past. Yeah. You know, when we're, when we're having conversations, right, in, in our relationships, we, we think about, oh, I'm not going down that road with you again because you hurt me 10 years ago, right? But what you don't remember is, you know, nine years ago in 364 days, they bought you some flowers and they said they were sorry and they tried to move past it and you agreed to it, but you fall and you stump and you bumble and, and on that past hurt. For whatever reason, we cling to these things that hurt instead of a new thing. Let's try to figure out how to get past it. Let's try to figure out how to get talk, to, to talk through it. Let's figure out how to be present for right now, for this moment. Can't change what I did to you 25 years ago. I mean, I didn't remember what I did to you 25 years ago. But right now, we have an opportunity. Right, we have an opportunity to be present, to work on those things, to enjoy the blessings that the Lord has given us, to still be here 25 years later, to sit down and talk and have a conversation. We're still breathing. We still have a chance, right? But we've got to be, stop living in the past. And the other thing that the Lord doesn't want us to do, stop sweating the future. <laughs> so worried about what's going to happen next. I don't even know if tomorrow's promised. All this worry about planning and thoughts and the this is and the that's is, right? You know, you know I, the when eyes, right? Man, when I get this new job, boy, things are going to be different. I'm going to start saving some money, right? When we go on vacation, I'm going to finally get a chance to relax. You know what? When I get this windfall of money, I'm going to start that new business. You know, when I get my mind right, then I'll listen to the Lord's call for me. Then I'll, I'll get up on the stage and start preaching. All the when eyes, worrying about the future, worrying about these things that may never happen. And I'll tell you, it's okay to plan. Don't get me wrong. It's okay to plan, right? But we, we need to see who needs to be included in our plans, right? For I know the plans I have for you. Amen. Not I know the plans you've made for yourself and I got your back. I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. So it's okay to plan as long as we're including the Lord in those plans. We need to seek out, dear Lord, what is it that you would have me do? I would like to go on vacation, Father God, but how would you like me to proceed with that? You know, I, I would like to be able to get into those pants when I have to go back to work. How would you like me to be able to proceed with that? You know, just all those things that we worry about, that we think about, that we're so consumed with yeah. from our own understanding. When the Lord says, I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And I know he also said, if you want to know, just ask. Yeah. So it's okay to plan, but let's make sure we're including the Lord in all of our plans. And not just any plans. They are plans for good and not for disaster. Yeah. To give you a future and to give you hope. Yeah, those plans may include a time to weep. Those plans may include a time to not embrace. Those plans may include a time to die. But the Lord has those plans for us. And we truly enjoy those blessings when we're present in the moment with him. Stop sweating the future. Stop it. You know, you have an opportunity to do it right now, right here. We don't have to wait for that next thing because that next thing may never come. Mm. Jesus. Right. You may never, you know, you may never get to the point where you can take that vacation again. 
So if you could take that vacation right now, take that vacation right now. If you want to call someone up and try to bury the hatchet, call them up right now. Because they may not be here tomorrow. You may not be here tomorrow. You know, if you want to sit down and have that conversation with your spouse, sit down and have that conversation right now. All right? Because till death do us part is a long time if you're going to hold a grudge. It's a long time if you're not going to forget about the past. It's a long time if you're not going to be in the moment and understand that you're blessed that the Lord has given you a spouse, that the Lord has given you children, that the Lord has given you family, that the Lord has given you friends, mm. that the Lord has given you the ability to be single and still thrive. That's it. We're so focused on what we may not have. We're so focused on what we want, but we forget the plans that he has for us. Yeah. And we've got to seek out those plans. Yeah. We've got to. And, and again, it's that future and it's that hope. And that hope is in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. As long as we know the Lord, we got a chance. Better than a chance. We have a promise that the plans for us are going to be good. That our, our, we'll have a future with hope. That we won't have to wonder about the days of yesteryear. That we won't have to sweat every little thing that we think that we may want. We don't have to sweat every little thing that we may think may happen to us. Right? We can plan but the Lord has to be in those plans. Yeah. Where the Lord wants us to be is in the present moment. Um, Exodus 16.4 um, says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough food for that day. Right. Lord could have blessed them with enough food for a year, he could have blessed him with enough food for a lifetime. Yeah. But very specifically, he said, go out each day and gather enough food for that day. Yeah. Why? Because that day is that moment that we get to spend with the Lord. Mm -hmm. That day is for us not to forget who our provider is, who our healer is, where our protection is from. That day is a day that we get to fellowship with the Lord, right? So he has it set up for us to live in the moment for that day, for that time, to give us this day our daily bread, right? That moment, it's not about the next thing. It's not hoarding up. It's not about stockpiling. I need to get $50,000 in the bank before I can go out and buy a candy bar. No, it's about that day. It's about right now. It's about being in the moment. And it goes on in this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. Mm -hmm. His instructions to be in the moment. Yeah. We're distracted. We're all over the place. Yes. Some days we're good. Some days we're failing that test. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Because we, we want to worry about the things of tomorrow, the things of yesterday, instead of being present, Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for like, waking me up this morning. Yeah. Thank you for letting me be right here, regardless of the situation, yeah. for this day. Thank you for providing me my daily bread today. Yeah. Thank you for, not want, for me not being in want today. Yeah. We can enjoy that moment. We can be glad in it, because yeah. this is the day that the Lord has made, right? Mm. This is where he wants us to be. So how do we remain present in the moment? We've got to focus. We've got to stay woke. We've got to take a chill pill. We've got to be content. And we've got to stop multitasking. Wow. Right? So the first thing we'll talk about is focus. You know, I, I often ask folks, um, you know, when I do a job interview, what the difference is between a dream and a goal. And... Folks are baffled. They talk about trying hard. They talk about, I'm going to work extra hard, do all these things. But the difference between that dream and that goal, one word, it's a plan. Mm -hmm. Folks that dream often don't plan. Mm -hmm. Folks that have a goal, they do have that plan. And we talked about our plans come from the Lord, right. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... If we want to turn our dreams into goals, we have to include him in those plans. Right? We have to focus on 
what the Lord has for us in those plans. Um, in Philippians 15 um, through 16 in, in, in chapter 3, it says, so let's keep focused on that goal. And who's that goal? Christ. Right? Keep focused on that goal. We want to set our face on him because his plans, right? His plans are our goal. We want to live the way he wants us to live, yeah. right? We want to be sure that we're aligned with his goal for us, right? Yeah. So we have to stay focused on that goal. Those of us who want everything God has for us, if any of you have something else in mind, something less than total commitment, God will clear your blurred vision. You'll see it yet. We've got to include him in everything for right now. In our conversations, we've got to be present right now. We've got to focus in on all that we're doing. We can't be worrying about, did I set my fantasy football team? You know, you know, just imagine right now, you know, I took a phone call. And I pulled to the side and I started texting. Sermon's still going on, but we're good, but I got to answer this one text. Give, give me one minute. Be right, right back. We good? Give me one minute. Now I'm texting. Right? Oh, oh, now I, I got to go fix the volume here. It's not fair, right? Why would we do that to anyone, right? We wouldn't want that to happen. Whether it's our children, focus on our kids, right? Yeah, you know, it may take them a little bit longer to get to the point, right? It may, they may go all around the world just to get to where you want them to be, but give them that attention. Be present with them. You know, give them a chance to, to get to it. We've got many more years of experience than they do. And again, when I talk about, you know, my daughters, you know, Randy just turned 18. But yeah, I tell her, and I tell her jokingly, hey, you know, five, six years ago, you want to sleep through the night and have a nightmare, right? So she hasn't lived that life, but we have that experience. Five or six years ago, you know, probably people we are today. And I have socks at home that are 18 years old, right? And I have clothes at home that are, that are, that are old as she is. So, you know, we've got to focus and be attentive to what they're saying, right? Because we may have heard, let's get it on, but she's hearing something else, oh, yeah. right? It's the same tune. It's the same melody. We've just got to listen and focus in so we can understand what they're saying. Mm -hmm. They may present it in a different manner. And just because, well, my parents told me to speak to, to them like this, just because they're not speaking to us in that manner doesn't mean we shouldn't listen. Or I wouldn't have dared do that when I was coming up. But you know what? We've allowed them to do that. So how can we stop them right now? Yeah. Right? You know, yes, we, we want to be respectful. No doubt about it. I'm not saying, you know, let your kids run all over you and, and, and dictate what, what they're going to do. But we have to be patient. We have to be in the moment to hear them out, to understand what it is they're trying to say to us, right, so we can stay focused. And if we're not sure, who do we call on the Lord? Dear Lord, please let me understand what this little girl is saying. <laughs> <laughs> you know, include him in those plans, right? So we've got to focus. And again, the Lord says, it'll clear our blurred vision, you know? Now that we're on the right track, let's stay on it. So it's not a one-shot deal. Right. Nothing in life is a one-shot deal. It takes practice. Mm -hmm. Practice makes perfect, although we'll never be perfection, right? We will practice living day by day, and they will die, then we'll be perfect, right? But not in this lifetime. So it's going to take more than one conversation. It's going to take being present in the moment. Yeah. It's going to take being focused. It's going to take being intentional about the things we do, the things we say. That's how we can improve our relationships. Being present right now, being alert, listening being right there in that moment, right where the Lord would have us to be, and inviting him into each and every conversation that we have, and inviting him into each and every experience that we have, so we can be present for the wonderful blessing that's in store. Because whether we're there or not, he's going to bless us. Amen. He, 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 it's, it's, not, it's not a contractual or transitional arrangement that we have with the Lord, right? Yeah. He, he made us promises, and he's going to do it. We just want to be present to see it. The next thing that we have to do is we, we've got to stay woke. This new term that's come out, you know, stay woke, stay woke. You know, be alert. You know, be on your P's and Q's. Again, we've said it for many, many years, right? Just under different, different words. 
Be present. Be attentive. Be on your game. Put your game face on. Now and stay woke. I like it, right? Hey, <laughs> Isaiah 42, 20 says, he sees many things, but does not observe them. His ears are open, but he does not hear. Right? It's, hey, black people have been getting killed in this country for hundreds of years. But we've tuned it out. Yeah. We've accepted it. We weren't woke. We didn't pay attention to it, right? We didn't take advantage of the moment or situations, right? We were sleeping at the wheel. You know, we, we've got to stay woke, right? And not just that, we can put ourselves to sleep. You know, I, I've been a culprit of it in my own house. You know, I can hear things that were going on that it was my moment to step in and be the father that maybe I didn't. Right? And that just made a, a bad situation worse because I wasn't paying attention. I missed that moment, right? Now, again, you know, the family, they reconcile, you know, but did it really have to go on for that long, right? Or did I just choose to tune it out? Did I just choose to have my ears open but not really hear, right? right? So we can make a conscious decision to tune those things out to not be woke. But if we want to be present for the moment, we've got to be on alert. Yes. You know, in the Bible says, if we knew what time they was going to come rob our house, would we let it happen? Mm. Right? No. So we've always got to be attentive. We've always got to be tuned in. We've always got to be there. We've always got to be present. That's what the Lord has called us to do. Be present. Stay woke. And just because we see a little bit of change doesn't mean we can go back and, oh, it's all good right now. You know, we're all going to be treated equally. You know, people are saying black power, we're taking a knee, you know, Black Lives Matter, all, all those things. That, that doesn't change the situation. That just drew attention to it. Now we got to stay woke. We've got to be attentive to that next step and that step after that and that step after that. And it may not happen in our lifetime. Maybe it's our children. Maybe it's our children's children. But I know for 400 years this thing has been going on and we're still in the same place that we were 400 years ago. We may be distracted by, oh, we can go out and get a job. Yeah, right? And yeah, and, and I've been fortunate enough and blessed enough to be in a position where, you know, I, I've made a lot of money and I've lost a lot of money. So I've had a chance to live a lifestyle with those that may not look like I do, but I've been accepted into that circle because of, not who I am, but because of what I did or yeah. what I do. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, still black, yeah. right? right? I can't fall asleep at the wheel and, and, and think about that. Just because I can go and sit at the front of the bus right now doesn't mean that they want me on that bus. Right. Just because I can walk into any restaurant that I want and sit down and have a meal doesn't mean they're going to prepare it the same way they will for somebody else. We're falling asleep. We're getting comfortable. We can't get comfortable on these things. We have to stay attentive. We have to stay woke. Just because my child doesn't come out and say right now, I want to kill myself, doesn't mean that she may not be giving signals. Are we just brushing that to the side? Are we not paying attention to their needs because we don't want to hear it? We don't want to believe it? Oh, my, my child would never. Well, well, he or she may be telling you, but we're not being attentive. We're not in the moment. That may be that one opportunity that we have. Do you need a hug? Yes, I do, right? Because there's a time to embrace, right? But oftentimes we want to get to that time to make them weep. And, and it can't be like that all the time. We've got to be present in the moment. Yeah. There's just too much at stake, not just for us, but for our children and our children's children. And if we don't have children, right, everyone impacts everyone in a different way. Looking in this room, there's a thousand teachers. Uh, there's not a thousand people here, but there's, there's a lot of folks here that are teachers, right? That impact our children. And I tell you one thing, not to get sidetracked, you know, if, if you don't think teachers need to deserve a raise, I can't wait for them to get back to school because we're trying to work at home, trying to make sure they get their work done at home, trying to keep them focused on getting their work done. We're trying to keep focused on getting our work done. But man, how it used to be was, I'm going to get this teacher my two cents. They're not teaching my kid the right way. If it was up to me, I would do this and that. Well, guess what? In this moment, right now, you got that chance. 
But what do you want to do? School's open in October? Right. Oh my gosh, I can't wait. Right. You know, so again, what are we in a rush to get to? We ask for these things, we get them, we're off to the next thing, right? So just, just again, bring the Lord into all of our decisions, into all of our thoughts, right? And just understand the blessing at hand, right? It may not be exactly what you've asked for today, but maybe you have to go through some stuff to get to that thing that you asked for. Right? Maybe you have to experience what the Lord has planned for us to ultimately get to what it is that we ask for. And at the end of the day, we just need to seek out his face and ask the Lord that may my plans align with your plans. That's the, that's the true holy matrimony. Right? When our plans align with his plans and we're here and we're vigilant and we're present in each and every moment, there's nothing else that we can ask for. And then, you know, Outside of staying woke, the next thing we have to do is, we got to chill out. You know, we're doing too much, right? Just take a chill pill. Relax for a minute. Mm -hmm. Ecclesiastes 4, 6 says, better one handful with tranquility than two handfuls with toil and chasing after the wind. Mm -hmm. Always chasing after the wind. We can go out and we can grab it for a second, but it's fleeting. It's not going to be here long. We have to go chase and get it again and chase and get it again, and chase and get it again, but the Lord is offering one handful of tranquility, chill, calmness, relaxing in a situation. Everything isn't a five alarm fire. You know, just because the car broke down doesn't mean that my life is ruined, right? right? It doesn't mean that when I pay to get this car fixed, I won't be able to pay for the mortgage, or I won't be able to pay for the other bills, or I won't be able to put food on the table. That's chasing the wind. Let me take this tranquility for right now. Right now, here's what I can do. There's food on the table. There's air conditioning in the house. Amen. There's plenty of space, roof over our heads. Yeah. And it's another car that we can use, but we're not even using it to get to work because we're working from home, right? So right. what are we chasing? We're chasing the things that we want, the things that are fleeting. We're not being in the moment. We're not being right here, right now, and understanding how the Lord has blessed us. We're all over the place. Just relax. And I'm convinced. I'm convinced that certain folks just need that ridiculousness, I'll call it, in their life. <laughs> right? They always need something to be mad about. Mm. Always need something to be angry about. Always need something to just to get them out of the moment. I, I don't understand that. And, and, and I just pray that, hey, just chill out. It's going to be all right. It may not be all right today. It may not be all right tomorrow may not be all right next year. But guess what? There's a blessing that you'll see tomorrow, that you'll see next week, right. that you'll see next year, yes, and knowing that the Lord has a plan, and a plan that's going to be good and give us hope in the future. Mm -hmm. So we have to just chill out and relax. We can't control anything anyway. Just chill. Yeah. And going on with chilling out, we've got to be content. Yeah. In Philippians 4, 12 to 13, it reads, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. I have learned the secret of being content in any and every situation. Yeah. In any and every situation. Yeah. I had a lot, and I haven't had a lot. Yeah. I've had a job, yeah. and I haven't had a job. Yeah. I've been single. I've been married. You know, I, I, I've been there. We've all been there. We've been sick, and we've been healed. We've been lost. We've been delivered. Amen. Be content in that situation. Enjoy the moment. Let the Lord do what he does instead of trying to struggle and fight to try to change things. Just enjoying that moment because we don't have to be here in this moment. You know, as long as we can breathe, we got a chance. We don't even have to be able to speak as long as we can formulate a thought in our head to pray to the Lord Almighty. We are in a good place. Yeah. We've got a chance. We need to be content with that. Is it frightening? Yeah. It's frightening. It's frightening not to have a job. Yeah. You know? Is it frightening to, to be ill in this yeah. time? Yeah. yeah. It's frightening to be ill. You know, I've got allergies, right? Yeah. My family has allergies. Last time I checked, they were the same symptoms as COVID. <laughs> so. Lord, forgive, you know, goodness gracious, somebody sneezes or coughs or get a runny nose. Oh, my God. 
We ain't even been nowhere. It's just in the air. You know? But we've got to be content in a situation, in a place that we're in, knowing that the Lord's got our back. Come on. You know, yeah. we've experienced it. And if you haven't experienced those things, it's coming. Sooner or later, right? Because there's going to be a time to tear and a time to sow, right? It's going to happen. A moment, though. We just don't need to try to take all those moments and stack them into one place. That's not order. That's not what the Lord wanted us to do. That's when we become lost. When we take all the different situations that have happened three years ago, three days ago, five years ago, worrying about the things that are going to happen next week, next month, next year, yeah. and now we take them on? Yeah. We weren't built for that. Yeah. We were built for this day and to pray to the Lord to provide our daily bread. Thanks, for this moment right now, he said, forget about the past. Don't sweat the future. Be content in this moment right now because that's the most important place that you can be. Yeah. You know, in, in, in sports, you know, there, there's this thing called next play syndrome, right? Don't let the same play beat you twice. And what I mean by that is you can't worry about what happened on the last play because there's a play at hand right now. That last play will get you beat twice and you'll miss this play. Yeah. And you can't worry about the next play because you've got to get through this first play first. Yeah. You can only impact the play that you're on right now. Yeah. You can only be present in the place that you are right now. Those of us in this building right now, we can't be worrying about dinner. We can't cook it. <laughs> There's nothing that we can do. We can't clean it. There's nothing that we can do about that dinner that's waiting to be cooked right now. Yeah. The same amount of time that we may be distracted right now, not being, being, be only being here, not being present, thinking about how you're going to cook that dinner, it's the same amount of time when you get home that you can just go ahead and cook the dinner. That's true. Mm -hmm. So true. We just spend so much time thinking about this scenario and that scenario and this and that that we forget about right now being present. If you're not going to be present, why are you here? Right. That's true. You think you're just checking a box? Mm. You think the Lord just wants to go down, oh, attendance, oh, they were here, they were here, <laughs> they were here. You have perfect attendance, you can come to heaven. Mm -hmm. No, you never knew me, right? We've got to accept him into our hearts. You know, this is not for form or fashion. This is, this is where he wants us to be each and every Sunday in this moment for this time. And if you're not going to be present, then don't be here, right? Again, if, you're, if you miss some days, that doesn't impact your ability to get into heaven. It doesn't. It's just good to get out and fellowship, be with like-minded folks to be able to see the joy or to be able to impact everyone else. We might be here because someone else needs to hear our words. Yeah. We might be here because someone else needs to give us a hug. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, it, we can't deprive ourselves or others of that moment. Right. If you're going to be here, be present. Yeah. If you're going to be in a relationship, be present. Yeah. If you're going to have children, be present. Being here, has, where, where has that gotten us? Mm -hmm. Nowhere. Right? It got us to the same cycle of doing over and over, repeating the same things, the same things. Be present. Forget about the past. Take that suitcase and burn it. Oh, yeah. Yes, Lord. That baggage, that baggage that we towed around, leave it alone. Yeah. He's doing new things. Let's see the new thing. Let's try this new thing and let that bag go. Yes. Let's not relive that hurt. Because, yes. again, you know, we, we've all been physically wounded. Right? We all may have a scar to show for it. And every once in a while we'll see it. But it doesn't hurt anymore. Because yeah. we don't think about it. We don't breathe life into it each and every day. But when we have that suitcase with us and we're taking it along with us, we're breathing life into that hurt every day. Yeah. We're breathing life into that person's ability to not make up every day. Mm -hmm. We're not giving them a chance. We're not finding that pathway in the wilderness. We're not finding that stream in the wasteland because we're so busy unpacking that hurt and we want to go through that pain. Why? Why would you want to go through that pain? Why not try something new? Why not give it a shot? You know, so be content where we are. You know, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want, I can do all things. All things. All things. I can do all this through him. Yeah who gives me strength. Yeah. Yeah. 
again, not on our own plans, not on our own schemes, yeah. not on our own understanding, not on our own intelligence. Mm. Through him yeah. who gives me strength. Yeah. Through him who has my life planned out. Mm -hmm. Through him who promised that he'll give me a future filled with hope. Through him that's doing new things. Through him that's blazing the trail. Just that's blazing a new trail. Through him. Mm. That's how we get through these things. Right. That's where we find that's where we find our content. Again, whether we're ill, he's with us. Yeah. Whether we're healthy, he's with us. Yeah. Whether we're looking for a job, he's with us. Whether we don't have a job, he's with us. And he's still blessing us the same way. Now, you know. Some of us have been out of work. Some of us may, haven't got, have, may have not gotten paid for a certain period of time. But through this time that he's given, I got a check. That just kind of fell from the sky. I wasn't expecting it. And it helped. Yeah. Yes, sir. Right? It, it, it definitely helped. You know, for those that lost a job, hey, there was some extra money coming in unemployment. And again, we can say it's not enough. What is this going to do? This ain't going to last. But the blessing is, it's one dollar more that we have today than we had yesterday. It's one thing I didn't ask for that I received. How are we going to use it? Are we going to be thankful for it? Or are we going to look and just say it's not enough? I need more. Be content in that moment. Trust the Lord through him who gives me strength, not our own understanding. And the last thing that we need to do is we got to stop multitasking. <laughs> oh, we got to. Uh, all these things in the fast couldn't have come at a better time. We're trying to do 15 things at once, a.k.a. we want to be efficient. Right. You know, I can cook the meal, I can rock the baby, and I can vacuum the floor all at the same time. Lord, we weren't built for that. We're going to end up burning the food. Grease is going to pop on the baby. <laughs> baby's going to get burned, start crying. <laughs> now we're going to be mad the baby's crying, and we can't get no rest right. because we're doing too much again, right? Yeah. Stop all the multitasking. Be present. I would challenge each and every one of you, the next time you're having a conversation with someone that you say you love, mm. show them that you love them by putting that phone to the side. Come on. Right? Yeah. The work that we need to do, right, is for that person in front of us, not for that person that's trying to reach out to us. Again, I remember a time we didn't have cell phones. We survived. Yeah, we, did. we lived. Right? We turned out okay. <laughs> right? So be focused. Be in the moment. Stop all the multitasking. Colossians 3, 23 through 24 says, Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. You know, again, going back through all those years, you know, I remember what brought me pride, right, was to be able to work and provide for my family. But when I look back at it, all the hard work, all the extra hours I put in that, that job uh -huh. 10 years ago, I'm not there. Somebody else is sitting in that seat. Yeah. But Deja, Randy, and Simone, they're still here. Yeah. You know, that, that last job I just had, loved it. Somebody else is sitting in that seat. But I sacrificed the moment with my family with the ones I loved for something that's fleeting. Right. Yeah. Work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Right. The things that are built up in the Lord are eternal. Right? Children, honor your parents. We're children. Let's still honor our parents. Yeah. Work for the Lord. All the things that we put in man, it's all fleeting. It's all gone. Mm. The sacrifices that my wife went through while I was trying to play football, being selfish, chasing my own ambition. Mm. Football's gone. Mm -hmm. 20 years later, next month, she's still here. Yeah. Let's yeah. think about the person that's going to be here mm. and not that thing that we're chasing. Not chasing that wind. Focus on what's valuable. The Lord's given us those children. The Lord has given us those relationships. We've got to be present for the relationships and not chase and not worry about the things of man. Yeah. You know, because the man will let us down each and every time. Yeah. And how much time have we wasted? You know, when I, when I sit back and I, and I look at the things in the past, I don't think and say, man, 
I did a heck of a job multitasking and I was getting in shape and going to work and putting the food on the table. My kids are good. No. I missed the moments of some of those conversations that they had. I missed the moments of tucking them in bed at night. I missed the moments of reading them a story or having them read me a story because I had my focus in the wrong place. I was multitasking. So in your relationships with your family, with your friends, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Knowing that from the Lord, you will receive the inheritance as your reward. You are serving the Lord Christ. Just imagine that. We're working to get a paycheck every week, every other week. That money's in, that money's out. But we put all our effort into that thing that's fleeting. Not that inheritance. That's from the Lord. That's everlasting. Our focus needs to be on Him. And finally, Ecclesiastes 3.11 through 12 says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. And just think about it. In that time, in that place, one moment, everything is beautiful. Do you know why it's beautiful? Because he's there with us. Again, like I mentioned in our prayer, this is a great presentation, but that's all it is unless the Lord is present with us in this time. The Lord being here makes it a sermon. The Lord being here allows it to be something that we can take and that we can grow from because it's beautiful in its time, a time for everything, a place for everything. While we're in that time, let's be present in that place. That's what makes it beautiful. Not the surroundings, not what's going on. Anything could be going on around us. It's just knowing that I'm right here. And my Lord, my God, is right here with me. And that's a beautiful thing. And he's the one that's going to give me strength. He's the one that puts joy in my heart. He's the one that knows what that next step is going to be. And as long as I stick with him, as long as I'm hanging with him, that's who I want to be with. You don't want to be hanging with the person that don't know where they're going. You don't want to be following that person that's trying to figure it out themselves. The Lord is the one that's created us. He knows us by name. He knows every hair on our head. He's got it planned out. Let's stick tight to him and be in its time. Also, he has put eternity into man's heart, yet so that he cannot find out what God has done from the beginning to the end. I perceived that there is nothing better for them than to be joyful and to do good as long as they live. Also that everyone should eat and drink and take pleasure in all his toil. This is God's gift to man. And that gift is the present. It's right now. It's that time that he's given us. You know, when we go back, again, we don't want to be like that person in that that Geico video. Expire. Expire. My daughter's moving out. That relationship has expired. I hadn't talked to my brother in three years. Expired. I haven't been the man that God called me to be, expired. I haven't answered or helped my fellow man, expired. I didn't recognize, I wasn't woke, that person crying out for help, expired. That's not the legacy that we want to live. That's not what the Lord has in store for us. He wants us to be joyful. He wants us to take pleasure. But not, let's not get that confused with happiness. Happiness is fleeting. Happiness is an emotion. That joy is everlasting. That joy can only come from the Lord. So let's make sure we're including him each moment at a time, each step at a time. Let's get rid of those expressions that say, when I go on vacation, I'll relax. When I get more money, I'll start this business. To when he sees it fit, I'll take that vacation and I'll relax. When he sees it fit, I'll start my own business. When he sees it fit, I'll do X, Y, and Z. It's not about us. It's about being present in that moment. It's about taking advantage of right now. It's about not missing any more blessings. It's not missing any more opportunities. It's not missing any more chances to sow. Things have been torn 
just need to be present to sow. We spend time planting those seeds, but now it's time to reap. But we're not present to see. You know, when you plant a seed, it just doesn't come out as a full-grown tree. It starts off as a small sapling, and it continues to grow and grow and grow. We want to just plant it and it come out and it's jacking the beanstalk the next day. Enjoy each step of that process because the Lord has made it and ordained it to be moment by moment. Be present in all things. Give thanks in all things. Be content in your situation. Stay woke. Realize life is happening around us. We can either play a role in it or we can be played by it. I don't want to be played. I'm tired of being played. Again, I'm too old to be played, but not too old enough where I can change the rules to this game, where I can be present, where I can be impactful. Don't rush to get back to the way things were. Embrace what the Lord has made for today. Do that new thing. So this week, like y'all remember, yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. The present is a gift from God, the Almighty. To God be the glory.